Let us set up JupyterLab on Ubuntu VM. This will also facilitate you to understand firewall configuration in JCP. First, let us go through the steps and then we'll actually get into the details about how to set up the JupyterLab environment on the Ubuntu based VM provisioned from JCP. First, we need to create Python based virtual environment. We can use this command. The virtual environment name will be demo.jl. There will be a directory by name demo.jl, which we'll be seeing uh, very soon. Once the virtual environment is created, we can actually activate it by using this command. Then we have to install required dependencies. For now, we'll be installing only JupyterLab. This is how you can actually take care of installing JupyterLab. However, it will take care of installing all the third-party dependencies with respect to JupyterLab. Even though we are only installing one library, you will see tens of other libraries that are being installed because JupyterLab is dependent on multiple other libraries. Then we can actually launch the JupyterLab. Even though the Jupyter Lab is launched, we will not be able to access the Jupyter based environment from our browser. To facilitate that, we have to go to firewall and open the port using GCP web console. We will be looking into those aspects as well. Once that is done, we should be in a position where we can access the Jupyter based environment that is set up on the VM for our purposes. So let me connect to the web console here. I will be using GCP. However, you should be able to use this in other uh, environments also, you just need to make sure that you are connected to the Ubuntu 18.04 based system. Even the other versions of Ubuntu, these uh, steps might work seamlessly, but you might run into issues because of the compatibility. At that time, you just have to troubleshoot the issues based upon the version on which you are trying to use these commands. Now I am connected to the console. First and foremost, I want to create the virtual environment. This is called as Python virtual environment. It is primarily to isolate the libraries. You will understand more about it at a later point in time. For now, just copy paste this command and create a virtual environment by name demo.jl. JL stands for JupyterLab. Now I can actually go here. I can open one of them and I should be able to run this. It will just create a folder called as demo.jl. You can see the folder here. You can also say find demo.jl to see what all we have in it. There are quite a, uh, quite a lot of stuff. The most important one is the bin folder. Under bin folder, you will see the commands such as pip, python, etc. We have to activate this by running this activate. The way you can uh, activate this is by saying source. You can give the related to path, which is nothing but demo jl bin activate. You can also give fully qualified path by saying source home dgadraju. This is my home directory under which I have created this virtual environment. I can say something like this demo gel bin activate and it will take care of activating the virtual environment. If you want to deactivate, you just have to run deactivate like this. It will deactivate the Python virtual environment. Once again, if you want to iterate, you can use one of these source commands. It will take care of activating the virtual environment. Once the virtual environment is activated, you should be able to run commands such as pip without using Python hyphen m command. I can say pip install. In this case, I want to install JupyterLab and hence I can say pip install JupyterLab and it should take care installing the JupyterLab for us. You can hit enter. It will take a bit of time to install JupyterLab and also the other libraries on which JupyterLab is dependent on. We just have to wait until all these libraries are installed. Then we should be able to take it further. Now the Jupyter is set up. You can validate by saying Jupyter and hit enter. You can see that it is showing some usage. Now you can say Jupyter lab hyphen h to get the help. You have all these options. The most important option is hyphen hyphen IP. It will facilitate us to run on any dedicated IP on this uh, virtual machine or a universal IP 0.0.0.0. .0 By default, it will use localhost. If it uses localhost, then we will not be able to connect to this JupyterLab environment from external systems such as our PC because this is running remotely. We have to connect it from our PC using browser. If we just leave it as default, it will not work. However, you can validate by saying JupyterLab like this. It will start the Jupyter based environment for you, but you can't validate because it is running on localhost. You will not be able to connect from the remote machines such as your machines using browser. You have to hit control C. Why? Now you can say Jupyter lab hyphen hyphen IP 0.0.0.0. This will make sure that this web service that is associated with the Jupyter is bound to all the IP addresses on this machine, localhost, public IP, private IP, so and so forth. Now you can hit enter. With respect to public IP of this machine, 
you can go to the gcp web console this is the public ip 35.188.168.142 even though uh, now the jupyter is running on 0.0.0.0 it is available on this uh, ip still will not be able to access for example in this case i can say http colon slash slash paste that ip but it will not work the reason is uh, the ports are blocked on gcp we have to open the port in gcp so that we can access this web service now first we need to understand the port number on which the jupyter is running for that we have to go to this one you can see that the port is nothing but 8888 using this information you have to go to this go to gcp web console expand this for the virtual machine which we are interested in go to view network details once you view the network details you can go to firewall this is where you have to go in the firewall you should be able to open the port so in this case we can open the port by creating a firewall rule you can click on this firewall rule you can give a name so let's say demo jl we are trying to uh, get into the server and hence it is called as ingress so if you are trying to connect the applications running on the server from external sources it is called as ingress inbound traffic into the server in this case we are trying to connect inbound to the jupyter environment which is running on our ubuntu based virtual machine now you can scroll down let's say specified service account target service account i think we can actually use uh, all instances in the network let's use that source filter you can say 0.0.0.0 slash 0 like this so any source as long as you have the ip address port number and the credentials they will be able to connect to the web service that is running on that machine if you want to exclusively restrict to your machine so that other machines cannot connect the application that are running on your virtual machine what you can do is you can pick your ip v4 ip you can just say my ip in the browser sometimes it might give ip v6 ip but the ip has to be like this it has to be ipv4 ip if you can't see ipv4 ip by default you have to click on one of these things to get your ipv4 ip in some cases uh, you will see the ipv4 ip directly also so if you see ipv4 ip like this ipv4 ip will be like this ipv6 ip will be a bit cryptic and it will be very big so as long as you see the ipv4 ip like this with four octets first octet second octet third octet is 34 and fourth octet is 5 you can copy this now you can go to this firewall rule and paste it here and then you can say slash 32 or 24 i do not remember you can use one of those let's see whether this will work i have specified 32 and then with respect to the port i just want to open 8888 i don't want to open anything else this is how we should be able to create the rule now let's uh, try whether i will be able to connect to this uh, application using the ip address colon port number you also have to specify the port number otherwise you will not be able to access it seems to be working now you should be able to see the jupyter based environment as this is authenticated by default you can get the authentication information by going to the web console this is the key you can copy paste this key now go to the jupyter based web interface which we got by entering the ip address and port number port number is 8888 make sure you keep this in mind you should be able to enter that and then you should be able to log in you can say save password and you should be able to log in whenever you bounce the jupyter based environment this token might change you just have to use the different token that is generated every time so this is how you should be able to set up jupyter with lab interface and you should be able to access now if you have any jupyter notebooks you can upload those things from here and you should be able to practice we will get into those details as part of the relevant topics in different sections uh, as part of multiple courses as part of this uh, topic we primarily focused on setting up of jupyter based environment using these steps on ubuntu based machine we have used the gcp as the main platform we not only set up the jupyter lab we also made sure that the firewall is opened under gcp only for my ip if you want to open for all the ips you can just say 0.0.0.0 slash 0 wherever i have entered the ip address of mine in case if you want to restrict you just have to go to google say my ip if it gives you ipv4 ip like this you can leverage it directly otherwise you have to click on 
one of these links and you should be able to get IPv4 IP and you should be able to configure the firewall. Once the firewall is configured, you should be able to access the Jupyter based environment using IP address and port number. The port number is nothing but 8888. It will prompt for the password. You just have to pick the password from the web console on which the Jupyter lab is running, which is nothing but this one. This is how you should be able to set up Jupyter based environment and access it from the browser on your PC. In this case, Jupyter is running on Ubuntu based VM on GCP. You are able to access using browser on your PC.